Hi and welcome to Community Shield, a program brought to you by the Houston Police Department. I want to thank Now Media, Heraldo Media Group, for allowing this program to air in its multiple markets. And of course, the Houston Police Department or Chief Troy Finner for allowing this to air on our social media. Now, this uh, program is going to be a special edition. We have the multicultural bus tour being hosted by the Houston Police Department. Now, why does this bring a lot of joy? because we are the only department in the United States that hosts something like this, where we take the cadets out on a tour and we take them to the multiple communities in our city so that the day that they step, that they step out into patrol, they are ready, they, they feel like they, uh, they know the communities that they're gonna be serving, and of course, they know a little bit of the background. So check it out, stick with us right here. We're gonna start where it all begins, at the Houston Police Academy at 17,000 Alden Westfield. And, and we're gonna check this out. We're gonna have Officer Jones, the person that actually organ organizes this whole bus tour, be the one introducing us to this. So check this out. I hope you enjoy. Please share the program that the Houston Police Department puts together just for you. Okay, what class do we have? 254. 254. What's y'all's motto? Strength unity. What is it? Strength through unity. Strength through unity. Okay, strength through unity. 50 cadets. Y'all look good. Y'all ready for a great day? Yes, it's gonna be a good day. And all my homies gonna shine today. Y'all know that TikTok. Okay, so we got the buses separated good. Um, we got five stops. Are y'all familiar with where we're stopping? Okay, first stop is gonna be the Monstro Center. Okay, that's our LGBTQIA plus um, center. And you'll have some speakers there speaking to you about the diversity of the community and kind of the expectation. And for every stop, that's pretty much what it's gonna be. Our African-American, you know, a little bit about the culture and the expectation. So first Montreux, second African-American. The third stop is gonna be our Asian area uh, where you'll be able to um, speak to those in the community in regards to how to best serve them, okay? And when you're going on this bus tour, it's a great opportunity to really think about where you want to um, train and where you wanna actually be stationed. The, this opportunity here allows you to better understand your community in which you will serve. Houston is super, super, super diverse. It's very diverse. In order to give you an extra tool in your tool belt, this is what this tour is for. So we got the Montrose Center. We have the African American Library, Freedmanstown. We have the um, Asian um, location, which will be um, at 113660 Bel Air. And then we have our Mexican Consulate's office, which is a cool stop too. And then we'll have a Spanish Islam location that you'll visit on the west side of town. Okay, this is an opportunity for you to learn, an opportunity for you to ask questions. Okay, so y'all excited? Yes, ma'am. Y'all gonna have Subway for lunch and we're just gonna keep it rolling. If y'all have any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know. I'm Joe Jones, I'm the LGBT liaison for the Office of Community Affairs. And later on this evening, you guys will be able to meet my our supervisor, um, Carvana Cloud, Deputy Director Cloud, okay? So like I said, any questions, comments, concerns, please let us know. This is for you to be able to have extra tools in your tool belt as you get to learn the communities in which you'll serve. All right? Yes, All right, let's have a good day, y'all. It's you, gonna be a good day. All right, let's go. Y'all get on the buses.
This is gonna be seamless. Everything is gonna be great, fine, fantastic. Um, it's a beautiful day, so yeah. Girl, so we're gonna have some fun with coming. this. Yeah, we appreciate y'all. We couldn't do this bus tour without you. So thank you, Metro. No, thank for, y'all for expecting all going next day. Yeah. Good, good. So we're gonna have the truck. That's the car that y'all are following. And then we're gonna have our two mark shops behind us, kind of helping us navigate our way if we get into a tight situation. So these two buses just have to keep up with me, the driver of the truck. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Easy, <Okay>. huh? <laughs> it's, gonna be. it's gonna be a great day, and all my home is gonna shine today. Okay. <laughs> It'll be fun. <laughs> our Montrose Center. Uh, we have a um, speaker today that I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Okay. Because yeah. All right. Dan Cato with the Montrose Center. I work on the development team. Um, this is the first time I'm giving this presentation. So bear with me a little bit. Um, I do live in this community, but um, it may be an interesting uh, hour for you guys as we go through this. But uh, yeah. So with the Montrose Center, um, I appreciate you guys all being here. Um, let's see if anything works. All right, you don't have to compromise convictions to be compassionate or professional. I'm not here to change your opinions about the LGBT community. I'm here to help create empathy for the community that you guys are going to be serving uh, before long, hopefully. Um, so no changes in personal or religious beliefs. Um, but I do want to, I hope that by the end of this presentation, um, you all have a better understanding of the LGBTQ community, and how law enforcement historically and currently impacts our community. Um, one of the most important things I want everyone to take away from today is correct terminology. That includes the difference between sexual orientation and gender identity, gender ex expression, um, and then also the appropriate use of pronouns. Um, just as some background about me, um, I was on the board of Pride Houston for about four years and HPD was also always such a great resource to us. And so I appreciate sort of the statement you guys are making by being here, but also 
continuing to support our community in those, in those ways. Cool. All right, so these are my guidelines. Um, Hi, I'm Joe Jones. I'm Houston Police Department's LGBTQIA plus liaison I'm with the Office of Community Affairs, and I want to introduce some very, very, very important people to you today. Hi, I am Kenya Gallardo. And also Jacqueline Barnaby. And like I said, we're here today on our multicultural bus tour, and we're just so elated to have these two people standing here beside me because this is our opportunity. She's just finished speaking to the cadets. This is our resource officer. And I want you to hear a little bit about why they're standing here today. Why are you here? Well, first of all, I am here because I wanted to talk about the transgender issues and the, crime, the hate crime we face as trans, community, as trans community in the city. And of course, to tell the police and let them know what we expect from them. That's very, very, very important because that's really the only way we're gonna bridge the gap. That, you know, my message is always, we're bridging the gap, bridging the gap. I'm ready for the gap to be bridged. And if there's anything that we can do to be able to better serve our transgender community, that's what the Houston Police Department wants. Um, so I appreciate you being here. How did you feel about talking to the cadets? Well, I feel a little bit nervous, but I, I, I am so happy because I think we are already building this a better relationship. This is the first step by meeting the trans community with the new police that could date. So I think it's very important and I am very happy to be here. And one thing that you did state when you were in front of the cadets is that, you know, the Latino community does not feel comfortable calling the police. When you call the police, most likely you're going to have issues, you're going to be misgendered, um, and, and you being able to give that message hopefully um, has opened their minds to kind of be different when we're serving the community. Do you agree? I do agree. I do agree with that. Okay, good, good, good. And so when you can't, when you don't call the police, guess what? Then we can't do a police report. And because of that, we can't crush crime, stop crime. We are One Safe Houston. We are a community of love. And right now we have Officer Jacqueline Bonaby here. And I would like for you to tell a little bit about why you're here and, and why it's important. Sure. Okay, uh, I'm Jacqueline Bonaby. I'm a 30 year veteran of the Houston Police Department. And my reason for being here at the Montrose Center is to provide police services to members of the LGBTQIA plus community. Uh, in thinking about the fact that the history between the police department and this community has been very rough, to say the, to say the least, um, me being afforded the opportunity to be here working at the Montrose Center, Monday through Friday, is giving members of the community an opportunity to come in to receive police services, to get police reports, to get information, to be that bridge that Officer Jones spoke of to provide services to members of the uh, community that have not felt welcome, felt like human beings, been mistreated, uh, and had very bad histories with the police, with the law enforcement in general. And so that's why I'm here is to provide those services. Right, that's right, and that's always a great thing. And this is our multicultural bus tour. We do our bus tours about every two and a half-ish months where we take cadets around the diverse areas of the city. Uh, I always tell the cadets, look at it as an extra tool in your tool belt to be able to come and get this kind of education um, and hear from these speakers to better be able to serve them. So this is our first stop, Montrose Center, and we're happy to be here. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. about this presentation today your first presentation it, it was interesting it was good though great group of cadets that made it that made it worth it Wasn't that a pretty interesting presentation there? We have a little bit of everybody kind of putting in their two cents and speaking to the cadets. Uh, we, again, the, the reaction was pretty cool. The cadets really liked this presentation and it exposed them to a lot of information. Now, as we move forward with class 254, now we're going in, 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 to visit 
the um, African American Library. We have our friend uh, Priscilla T. Graham, who's going to be hosting the cadets, and she's going to be taking the cadets uh, down the, the, the history lane there. We are going to visit the Freedman's Town, and she's going to be walking with the cadets, showing them some of the historical uh, landmarks in that area. Freedman's Town is, is a, it's a very uh, interesting place uh, that the cadets are going to be exposed to and of course uh, we're going to be able to speak uh, to our deputy director Kirvana Cloud who's going to be doing the welcoming and and much more so stick around this is a community shield of the Houston Police Department. So thrilled that you all are here not only as members of class 254 soon to be police officers within the Houston Police Department but that you've taken the time to be very engaged on this multicultural bus tour. You all are about to embark on one of the most important careers of your life. I hope you always stay police officers because having law enforcement and law enforcement that understands the diverse communities in the city of Houston is critical, especially for times such as these. So thank you and welcome to Freedman's Town. I live in Freedman's Town. I'm so proud to live in Freedman's Town, also known as Midtown, also known as Fourth Ward. This area has so much history, so much rich history as it relates to African Americans. Freedman's Town was the first settlement that African Americans made and had when they came uh, to Houston and were free from slavery. You're going to be able to see so many wonderful ancestral uh, things and relics here, and it's actively a part of who we are as the city of Houston and the African American community. You are gonna go on, you're gonna make many stops today uh, in many areas of town, and that's because Houston is so very diverse. So the Office of Community Affairs uh, and on behalf of Chief Finner, I want to thank you so much, not only for your engagement, but for your desire to learn and understand the diverse communities that you're about to set out and embark to protect. Class 254, we're proud of you. Class 254, you can do anything you want to do. But most importantly, Class 254, remember, we are here to serve and to protect. God bless you, and thank you so much, and welcome to Freedom's Town. on a magnificent tour throughout historic Freeman's Town. We're excited to take them to the historic brick streets so they can learn about the most spiritual and historical place in the city of Houston. Center. Now we go to the west. We're going to be visiting our Vietnamese community and we're going to be speaking with one of the leaders that has been uh, a part of uh, this organization called the Boat People SOS. A very interesting organization that has so many resources uh, for the Vietnamese community. And of course, we want to expose our cadets to this because we want them to be able to show the community where they can receive the help just in case they uh, find somebody that needs the help from uh, from this organization, so stick around. Guys, please let me w have a warm welcome to our Vietnamese speaker, Ngoc. Well, thank you, guys. Welcome to BPS Labs, and welcome to the Vietnam War Memorial today. So I'm really glad, it's such an honor to have you all here today. And let, let me start by, you know, talking about the Vietnam War Memorial right there. And it's, this shopping plaza uh, is owned by uh, our state rep, uh, Hugo Moore, and in, in, in the year 20, uh, 2005, um, he, he built this shopping plaza and he donated that lot right there to the Vietnamese community so that we could build this Vietnam War Memorial to commemorate and remember you know, uh, those that who sacrificed their lives in the Vietnam War 
trying to defend the freedom of the South Vietnam. Okay? And we have a right here. And um, I believe that you guys have heard about the Vietnam War or learned about it, right? And, and you see the statue right there, okay? Um, with soldiers, uh, one, one soldiers, uh, those are Vietnamese soldiers, and the right hand is the Vietnamese soldiers. So that's the symbol of the alliance uh, between the South Vietnam and the US, uh, the United States uh, who fought together in the Vietnam War. Uh, and and that's, the, that statue is built on, on top of nice steps. Maybe if you have a chance to visit that, you can see nice steps on it. And in our culture, the number nine, uh, we believe that the number nine is a separate number. Um, so we built statues on top of nice steps to show the respect to the soldiers. Okay? And also, um, you'll see another statue, um, the statue in the right there. Um, there's like families, uh, parents, kids. Um, that's a symbol of you know um, survivors uh, of the war trying to escape uh, the communist rule at that time, um, and and they was known as the old people uh, because they escaped um, the communist rule by boats at that time. And you may wonder why by boats and not on feet or any type of transportation. Uh, you know that you know Vietnam, right? It's a stretch of the and on the top, the north, the north, and on the west side, we have Laos and Cambodia. At that time, they also communist. So the people of South Vietnam had nowhere to go, right? Uh, besides, sail out, uh, sail on the sea on boats, and in a hope of you know reaching. Um, to other non-communist countries uh, like Philippines, Malaysia, uh, Thailand, and Hong Kong. So Hong Kong was under the British.
Before we continue with more of this multicultural bus tour, let's take you to an investigation that was done there in the east side with our differential response team. They do uh, some of the abatements and some of the cleanups in the area. Uh, and of course, I want you to stick around and look at this investigation. We have uh, Officer Ramon Palacios, uh, myself and uh, Sergeant Cisneros, and also Mac Max Arriaga helping out in this investigation. So stick around and, and, and check this out. This is uh, an abatement that happened there in the east side. We are at a uh, DRT incident. Uh, there is a trailer that we are working on removing here. Now, Officer Palacios works in the DRT Community Service Unit at East Side Patrol, and he's got a little bit more of the inside of this uh, of this trailer. Uh, what, so, what's going on here, Officer Palacios? Well, well, like you're saying, too, is uh, this uh, DRT issue? You know, different response. You know, the team. That's what we, my unit, uh, we deal with. Uh, nuisances around the community you know lately we've been getting a complaint from our during our uh, pit meetings and civic club meetings about this trailer that we have back here as you can see i mean it's, it's trash all over the place you know it's you know a mattress and broken windows i mean you know, a whole bunch of other stuff that comes with it i mean has a broken axle you know it's just, it seems like it's just abandoned there uh, we've been coming out here maybe for about a month you know trying to get it get it moved out the way you know but uh i think today we won't be able to do it i mean stuff like this it's uh trailers i mean it's just you know, just so you, in case you don't know uh it you they can only be on the street for about two hours after two hours you you get a ticket and you know after and ticket and get it told you know so uh just in case you know fyi you know you have a trailer out there but something like this it's more of a nuisance you know it like i said trash and all that creates red harbridge you know also, you know, like I said, it has a door that's not locked, not secure, windows are broken. I mean, you have little kids or anybody I mean, go in there, you know, and uh, no telling who could be in there. And not just that, I mean, animals, snakes and stuff like that, you know, kids get bit or something, you know. Um, and, you know, other people going in there, vacancies, you know, going in there, doing drugs, or doing all, who knows what, you know. So that's, that's the kind of thing that we try to bait you know, just for the safety of the community. This is a trailer that's abandoned. So this is what the DRT unit uh, is doing. Uh, nuisance, nuisance abatements. These, uh, this trailer has been here for approximately a month and uh, DRT officers have written citations on this. This is uh, parked on the roadway and it's been here, it hasn't been moved. You can see there's uh, these broken windows, there's things hanging out here. It's just safety, it's a safety issue, it's a safety concern. You have uh, houses neighborhood just just a, a few yards away there's families there's people that live here there's businesses and who knows uh this this trailer is basically here abandoned it was left here and it hasn't been removed there's trash on it If we look inside, we've uh, seen that no one is here at this at this point. We hear that somebody once every once in a while comes by and, and is probably staying in here. But again, this is a safety issue. Uh, a child can come inside this truck. Now that the temperatures are beginning to rise, it can get hot inside. There's things in there who knows what's in there a broken glass trash just all kinds of problems and uh, 
it needs to get moved out of here for the safety of the community and again broken windows theory when you don't deal with the situation it, you only can add on to this it can, it can get worse that trailer that's also parked in front of this trailer has also been sitting there for some time and uh, again, again tickets have been written for this trailer and uh, it just doesn't move this is what uh, our DRT units do they clean up these streets and make them safe bother nobody no. but you know we're not time, but, you know, yes sir done. <laughs> yes sir thank you hey yeah. hey and Inside. i'm glad that i'm here to see it yeah. i just left another meeting it's with uh namac and okay. with the uh tejano center yes, yes. yeah uh they're the ones that's helping us with this house so we just had a meeting at, right here? Oh, at, no. at uh papados really yeah we wow. just came from papados well the east side east side drt community service unit is uh, the guys that are out here uh, DRT. That was the, uh, yes, DRT. for the house oh, no, look, look, look. Just in time. Uh, that's, that's a house? Huh? Yeah. Oh, man. That's the right. house. Yeah. We just so, left the house. We just went inside. You know, uh, wow. we got the code to go in. Since we left the meeting, once the, you know, to stop by this house. That's what we did. So, so yeah. tell us, what is a, what is the situation with this trailer? The situation with this trailer on the Port Road is a nuisance for our neighborhood. We've called so many times. All I want to say is that if that same trailer had sat in River Oaks, River Oaks one day, that trailer would have been gone. I've called and called and called. It has taken like two or three months to get this thing moved. We're not River Oaks, but we want to act like we are. Okay? We are very proud of Smith Edition community. How, how, are you part of a civic club organization? Yes. Tell us yes. a little bit about that. My name is Janice Carter. And our president is, is Miss Teresa Williams. She's uh, 92 years old, and she has worked her whole life out here. She was born and raised by a uh, midwife out here. And so she's been out here all her life. She knows this uh, neighborhood, and she's tried very hard to keep it up. Now she's up in age. We're just trying to help her out. Now uh, our, our mayor and our chief, they, our, they have a plan working called Save Houston. How important is the safety of this community and the removal of this trailer, of this nuisance trailer for the community? To move this trailer tonight and for me to be a witness, you all just don't understand. I have called and called. We are thankful. We are proud. You know, we don't have, you know, big fancy houses out here, but at least we have people that care. We have kids out here, you know? We don't want those kids to be coming over here, you know, seeing uh, drugs and, you know, prostitution and all that kind of stuff going on, you know? We want our neighborhood safe, just like everybody else. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. And uh, thank you for stopping by and letting us know that, yes, that, 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 that you are committed. You all are doing a great job. Hey, I'm going to come to the next PIP meeting, and I'm going to bring some food with me, okay? <laughs> all right. I promise you that, yeah. okay? <laughs> thank right. you. Thank, right, thank you so much. so much. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to get to witness it. Yeah. You're going to get to witness the towing of this <laughs> nuisance. This nuisance. <laughs> I am happy. I got to call, uh, call our president, Miss uh, Teresa Williams, and, and let her know. And then if y'all could just keep those 18-wheelers off of here, because the kids are riding... You know, logo signs and all Graffiti. that kind of stuff. On, yeah. Well, we'll take care of that, man. Thank, thank you. you. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all be safe, okay?
going to the Southeast Dart or Appletoin. Yes. are great God thank you Lord for blessing us <laughs> thank you thank you thank you oh wow the trailer is gone our kids can walk to school in peace without having to see all of this activity over here so thank you <laughs> We want to send a special shout out to all of our differential response team unit officers that are working in different areas in the city of Houston for always making our cities safe. Now let's go to our next stop in this multicultural bus tour as we go west, west, west. We go to the Mexican consulate. We're going to have uh, the cadets visiting with Juan Carlos. He's going to be hosting us in the Mexican consulate. You're going to learn some of the things that the consulates do other than just uh, passports or permits. They do a lot more. They have a lot of resources. Stick around for this part of the multicultural bus tour. Good afternoon. Welcome to the consulate of Mexico in Houston. We're here with the Cultural Diversity Bus Tour and covering the Hispanic portion of the Cultural Diversity Bus Tour. We're here at the Consulate uh, of Mexico in Houston and we're here to learn about the different divisions and departments that are within the Consulate. A lot of people think it's normally a documentation type of activities that they cover here, but no, there are multiple, multiple services provided to the community. So we're here to meet the different Consuls, the Consul of Protection, the Consul of Documentation, and the Consul General, of course. So we're here to inform them of the different services in case they ever run into to a Mexican national who's looking for services that we may not be able to provide, they're here to help them and we're going to be able to refer them to the Mexican consulate. So once again, thank you very much for coming here. It's an honor. Um, and that, uh, with that said, I'm gonna let my colleague Alejandro Macias, also a very experienced career diplomat, been posted in several countries around the world, and now responsible for this amazing industry of uh, servicing hundreds, if not thousands of people every month. Alejandro, this, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juan Carlos, and uh, thank you all for being here. I uh, gave you a welcome to the Consul General of Mexico. My name is Alejandro Macias, and I am the Consul for Documentation Affairs at the Consulate, which is basically the operation that you will see once you enter the Consulate. It's basically everything that happens over here on the first floor. So, um, to put this into perspective, uh, we know that, uh, that the Mexican community is a very vibrant part and a very large part of the Houston community and this also reflected on the amount of work that we have every day here um, just so you know as we speak uh, um, you see people here waiting for their passports every day we service 700 people here at the consulate and in addition we service another 200 people on, on a satellite office that we have right now in Portland so Every day we try to we service 900 people. This leads us to issuing every day around 550 passports. And unlike uh, other processes in the issuance of passports, 
the person that walks in here to request a service, either they want a passport or they want a consular identification, uh, they go out of here in two hours and a half with a passport in hand. And um, this allows us to work at a, we're forced to work at a very fast pace. And what we do over here in, uh, in the office and in order to service this amount of people, we have to make uh, a replica as close as possible of how an office of passports works in Mexico. So what we have here, we have particular systems in which we input the file of, uh, of a person, their name, their basic information, address and such, emergency contact is very important for us in case of uh, natural disasters uh, like we saw in, in Louisiana last year. And um, another thing that we do is that this system is connected real time to all the consulates and all the offices that are in Mexico issuing passports. So none of us is corrupt. We will do the same. ¿Cómo está compadre? ¿Qué dice? ¿Hablan español los dos? Así es, así es. A ver, este. Monterrey. Un poquito de Monterrey. Tigres. Tigres. Puro tigres de aquí. ¿Qué le parece ahorita la, la visita al Consulado de México? Es genial. Me encanta ver. Quiero traer a mi esposa aquí. Para darle los papeles. Ándale. Órale, papá. Míralo. ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo te llamas? Uh, David Reynolds. ¿David Reynolds? Reynolds. R-E-I-N-H-O-L-D. Órale, papá. A mí se me hace que eres del DF, ¿vale? Uh, Monterrey. 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 Bien, por Órale. Yo en Dewey en aquí. Specifically in the second floor in the protection department, you guys don't need an appointment there. We do a lot of legal resources, uh, free legal resources, free consultations with lawyers. I specifically do everything with deceased. So a lot of Mexican nationals that are deceased here, their family want to send back their body or their cremation. And then we help them out, we guide them, and we can even help them out financially. Nice. Oh, that's what you want. Well, I, I thought you guys only did uh, dealt with um, passports and stuff, but now I know you guys deal with the disease as well. Yeah. It's really awesome. Yeah. We have more departments, so, and you guys don't need an appointment for the protection department, so it's always open for you guys. And your name, ma'am? Alondra. Alondra, Miss Alondra. Thank you very much. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. So, so what do you think? Uh, what do you think about this this place? About the experience, the whole bus tour so far. It's we visited a couple. Have done a couple of stops. So, so tell me what you think. Y'all three can prepare something yeah, for yeah. me. Go ahead. So, honestly, sir, I I think it's really awesome. Like we get to know a lot of things. Um, me personally, I'm new here to Houston and traveling through all these spots. It actually really got me to uh, uh, open my. I, how do you say it? It, it, it got me to, to see things in a whole different way. And also um, with the Asian community, with the Mexican consulate, um, with the um, African American museum, 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 the, the, the library. And the library. I, I, I didn't know anything about that, and I really know, like now I know a lot about it. So um, going out there, I'm actually like, well prepared. You know, after I met Priscilla, uh, the one you guys spoke to at the with the um, at the tour over there of uh, Friedman's Town, yes, it, even my my own perceptions changed. I didn't know a lot a lot of things that she spoke about, and it was also an eye opener for me. So, yes, definitely what he says. Uh, it's a big learning experience. Uh, a lot of things I didn't know about our culture, you know, about the roots. But it's definitely a learning experience. Uh, I've learned a lot. And, 
I want to bring that out, you know, and bring it out on the streets whenever, you know, I graduate and become a Houston police officer, but definitely a learning experience. Awesome, my friend. Yes, sir. Like my fellow cadet friend, Kenny, like you mentioned, I'm moving here to Houston as well, and this trip overall has been very formative. I learned a lot, and overall, I'm looking forward to working with everybody. There you go. Awesome, guys. This is an amazing experience. Thank you, guys. Awesome, awesome. You know, you know, this is the only police department in the nation that has a bus tour and that has a, a cultural bus tour. So, but this is why I apply for this agency. Uh, this is one of the best, and I want to, I want to be trained by the best. You know. Thank you, Mr. James. Thank you, thank gracias, you. gracias, Jaime, verdad? Jaime, Jaime. Jaime, what are they? We've been. Just happy to talk to a lot of the, um, the individuals down here trying to obtain the passport and everything like that. You guys are doing a really, really good job, and at the same time, thank you for letting me understand how you guys work. No, thank you guys yeah. for visiting us. Yeah. You guys are welcome here anytime. Thank you. Yeah. you me well? Okay. Thank you once again for, for being around. Uh, I have with me, as I uh, told you downstairs, uh, the, the presence of three uh, very important consuls of this consulate that deal with uh, services that you don't imagine are being offered in the Mexican consulate. I'm going to uh, have them uh, introduce themselves and uh, explain a little bit of what they do. Thank you very much, Consul Diana. Receiving the cadets of the Houston Police here at the Mexican Consulate is very important because that they can understand that we can work together in benefit of our communities. There are plenty of areas where we can work together and no matter what time is it or the hour it is, they can call us and we can uh, support the Houston Police. We continue moving more to the west and now as we close this multicultural bus tour we're going to be visiting our friends in the Muslim community. Now this mosque that we are visiting is the only Spanish speaking mosque. Isn't that an awesome thing <laughs> that we're visiting this very unique location. So the cadets are going to get exposed a little bit of, uh, you know, to, to, to the, this, the, this, the culture, a little bit of the faith and, and what's expected when we have these, these encounters, when we speak to some of the members of the Muslim community. So stick around as we visit our last location in this multicultural bus tour. I hope you enjoy and share the program. My name is Yasser Bashir and I'm Assistant Chief with HPD. And today we are going to visit this mosque. It's, it's, it's called Islam in Spanish. It's one and the only in Houston and perhaps in the nation. Um, so this is very unique and this is something we want to bring this to our cadets. Awareness because our city is very unique. We have people from all over the world with different belief systems, with different cultures and heritage. And we want to bring this type of experience to our cadets because this is a community they're going to be patrolling in the future and this is a great way to build relationships and, and become more aware and knowledgeable about our city and the people that live in here. So I'm excited and I'm ready to answer many of the questions that they have.
Eso. So what did you think about the bus tour? Yeah, it's amazing. I learned, I learned a lot. I never knew there was Islam in Spanish, you know, so it's better, more tools for my belt. There you go. You know, to serve the community and uh, it's an honor to, you know, to be chosen to be a cadet at the Houston Police. Orale, papa. Yeah, so it's, I want to, you know, make my family proud. I'm, I'm the first uh, Houston Police officer. There you go. Be, you know? There you so go. I want to be, make my parents proud. You know, and, and, well, you enjoy, brother, the career. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.